Welcome to another boat changing vlog. How are you doing? <laughs> Hello. Uh, in today's entry, I'm in my Collins again with my impromptu life source. All right. Um, so what's new? <laughs> Hope you guys are doing well. Um, in today's entry, I'm coming with, with I'm coming at you <clears throat> with, I guess, kind of a downer entry. <laughs> Hence my cheerful disposition, right? Um, yeah, like, I mean, hmm. I guess, you know, like sometimes you have ideas for vlog entries and like sometimes they're positive, sometimes they're negative. I try to keep my entries as positive as possible, you know, and if they're not to be positive, then like I try to make them as as practical as possible in the sense of like, you know, what can we what can we learn from something that's not so positive or pleasant you know in our lives and today happens to be one of those <laughs> entries where i have like kind of yeah you know not not such a uh kind of a, like a lovey-dovey message but rather just talking about the state of the world and you know a few things that's yeah kind of keep us away from truly living a great life right so what are the, t the the two greatest kind of pandemics of the world right and i say pandemic kind of loosely but like what what would you say are like the two biggest uh issues that people have in in the modern world right so i guess we could we could keep this to kind of like the scope of just modern society you know like what what two things are the most kind of destructive to people right and i had kind of an insight to this and i believe it is one loneliness and two mediocrity right and yeah one is kind of a like a, a personal affliction, you know, loneliness. We all, particularly in the modern society, like a lot of us feel lonely, even even though we're surrounded by like, you know, by people, by like noise and events and stuff like that. Like we all feel this pervasive feeling of loneliness in our lives, right? In the sense of like, we can't quite, we feel like, no matter how much we try to live our lives, there's there's a miss, there's an emptiness within. Right, there's an emptiness, and a lot of us feel this. You know, like I say, I think it's one of the most rampant things that we, in terms of problems that we have in society. Right, it's loneliness. The other one, mediocrity, is less of an affliction and more of a um, like a, a categorization in terms of like your your social standing, I suppose. Like, well, not really. Like, but but it's it's the first one is kind of like a, a condition that we all have, right? Which is to be lonely. It's kind of more of like an emotional thing, whereas like mediocrity is more of like a, a judgment thing. You know, it's more like, are you successful? If you're not then you're mediocre, you know, kind of a thing, right? And mediocrity is, is also another thing that society is, like, is rife with, right? It's like, and like, I say mediocrity, and it's like, I don't know, like, how do you define mediocrity? How do you define success? And like, I'm not trying to engage in that kind of debate, rather, it's just that we all, I think, even the ones that aren't consciously aware of it, like, you know, we want to live lives of fulfillment right and many of us unconsciously unconsciously or consciously feel that we are not living to our greatest potential you know maybe maybe a lot of people don't want to succeed maybe they just want to live like a comfortable life but nonetheless like there's always that pressure you know there's and there's always that kind of like disappointment that is always in the background of many of our lives right just to like i feel that i deserve more you know I feel like I deserve more in life, right? So, two things that are rampant in society, right? And 
we need to solve them, really. Like, we need to solve them. Because loneliness is... I mean, I'm really not someone to talk because, like, at the time of recording, like, I don't have much social abundance in my life, and that's kind of... That's kind of un understating, <laughs> you know, things. Um... Yeah, so I I I'm, I shouldn't be the one who's kind of like parading in the streets, going like, oh, like you know, you sh if you're lonely, you should do something with your life, you know, like, like I'm I'm not the best, you know, kind of ambassador or something like that, but like, but yeah, you know, but I I recognize in my own life that it needs it's something that needs to be sorted out at some point, and now versus like a couple years ago, more urgently. You know, uh, before I was kind of like, I'm setting off my dream, you know, I'm doing, I'm sharing these messages, you know, like, I don't got time for people, you know, but now I'm like, okay, so I did the whole, like, isolation thing, so that I could focus on myself, and to get my, my, my head straight, but now I'm like, okay, but now I've got no one around me, and like, it kind of sucks, right, but, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's like, human connection is one of the scariest things. And of course, I'm speaking for myself, but I have the strange feeling <laughs> that I also speak for many, you know, on, on many people's behalf. Human connection is one of the most terrifying things in the world. You know? I can think of many other things that pale in comparison to, like, actual human connection, like intimacy with other people, letting someone in your life, letting them know all of not only your secrets physically, but, like, all of your weaknesses, all of your fears, all of your dark thoughts, you know, all of the weirdness and, and stuff that you, you don't want to face. And for someone to come that close that so they see all of that, that's pretty terrifying, you know? That's pretty fucking terrifying. And yet, human connection is probably one of the most lacking things in the world that is also a core human need. You know, it sounds cliche to say, I'm even inclined to think, human, <laughs> all right, let's, well, let, where's Barney? Where's Barney the, the purple dinosaur? Let's get him in and everyone can sing and hug together, right? And sing Kumbaya around the campfire. You know, but, but it's, but it's, you know, Hey, like, what else can I say? It's, it's, you can continue to be lonely and to, to, to pretend that, like, you know, that you're fine by yourself. And in many ways, I am, right? Like, I think there's a lot of freedom that comes from, like, social, iso <laughs> social is isolation. You know, just giving my own perspective, like, there's a lot of freedom that you get from it. You know, like, you don't have to deal with, like, fucking drama and bullshit. You know, and yet, you f you're fucking lonely, you know? It may not bother you the first two years into it. You might even be like, this is great, I never, why did I even, why did I never do this earlier, right? But then like three years down the line, four years down the line, you're like, I'm still alone. <laughs> still doing my thing, you know? And like, I don't know, again, I'm speaking from my own experience, but like, many people, other than myself, they have friends, you know, they have lots of contacts, but like, they still feel empty, they still feel lonely, right? Because all of those contacts are surface contacts, you know? It's like, what's Facebook? It's like, w two close friends and 998 acquaintances, you know, like three quarters of which you don't even talk to ever on the one occasion that you need something from them. So you use them that one occasion and then you and then you don't talk to them for like the rest of whatever, right? You know? So like what's wrong? You know, why why is it so difficult to feel a sense of connection? You know? Well, it's because we live in a society the kind of message I have, you know, or the kind of insight that I had for this entry was that, like, it's the greatest irony 
because life is full of irony. <laughs> when you look back on your life, when you look forwards at what your life could be, it's full of irony life, isn't it? <laughs> like, but like, one of the greatest ironies of modern society is that, is that it causes loneliness, right? As in society how it is now. Mediocrity, like I said, is another thing that is rampant in society. Whether or not people actually want to make something of their lives, you know, if you have a dream, what are the odds that you're actually going to let it, like, what are the odds that you're going to actually going to take action? You know, much less, act, like, much less hold, hold out until you succeed. Statistically. I'm not saying, I'm not being like a, like, I'm not being, I'm not trying to be like a, like, devil's advocate here. Although I kind of am, but like, I don't know, but, but I'm like, I'm on a dream, I want to succeed. I'm sure that you're on a dream, I want you to succeed. But like, just looking, just like speaking statistically, like, what are the odds, if you have a dream, that you're actually going to like, take action and succeed? It's like, the, the, the statistics say that, not likely. You know, and that's something I have to face in my own life, you know. And, yeah. And then like, that's, and then that's only if you have a dream, right? Because there are people in society, you know, who don't even care. <laughs> Or like are oblivious to this. They, they, they feel like, you know, like you and I, that they, that they deserve more in life. And they're always complaining that they don't get more in life. And yet they're not even consciously aware that like they need to like do something in their lives in, towards success, right? So, and it's like, how much, like, how much better would the world be if we all kind of took action and succeeded, you know, or at the very least, like, moved in the direction of success. Like, the world would be so, so much better. And yet, mediocrity is rampant, right? What was the last, like, self-help slash, like, um, you know, like, uh, entrepreneurship video you watched? I'm sure you've watched one in, like, within the last day, you know, if you're like me, you know, and you're, and you're a self-help ju help junkie, basically. Like, you, You've probably watched one at least in the last week, right? And like, <laughs> and like, would I be would I be correct in guessing that the message was something along the lines of "take action, take action, motherfucker, take action," you know? Stop procrastinating, do it, you know. Read a book a day, <laughs> do this, do that. Why are you wasting your time, you know? Take action, right? Because, and they line it out as well. It's like, because if you took action, imagine what it'd be like if you were 10,000 pounds richer a month. If this were the case for you, if you had more friends, if you did more stuff, if you had more legacy, if you had more intimate relationships and more love in your life, and you could travel the world, you could have new experiences, you experienced new cultures, right? You could, you, could, you could kick it with the creme de la creme. Wouldn't your life be more awesome if you just worked harder, take action, my friend. Stop procrastinating and take that action that you've been meaning to take for a month, right? That, that's basically what they say, right? And it's like, and yet, do you feel like taking action? Maybe you are for like, you know, and maybe you do. Like, I'm not saying like you, you don't, right? But like, in spite of all of, all of like, in spite of like, the seeming like, rash, rationality of, of what these people say, how many people actually take action? <laughs> Not that many. Why is this? You know? And again, I realize that it's probably because of our society, right? And now, as you know, now that I've kind of given a bit of an introduction, I'll explain why. So, society evolved from a, from a much more primitive state, right? So, I don't know how, however long ago, right? Like maybe like, even like a, like a thousand and, or a couple thousand years ago, like society was way more primitive, right? Um, death was more of a common occurrence. Disease was more of a common occurrence. War and violence was more of a common occurrence. Um, you know, if you could, like in some of these older societies, if, if you could like survive childhood and, and you weren't part of like the like the, arist the, arist the aristocratic circles, you were, you were considered to be lucky, you know? 
And so, like, we evolved from a world that was inherently dangerous. You know, we come from a world that was all about survival of the fittest, right? You know, your life was not guaranteed. Human life, like, when you really think about it, was way less valuable than it was today. It's crazy how, like, how, how safe we are in today's time. Because there was a time not too long ago in human history where, like, if you weren't, if, if people considered that you, did, that you weren't worth a shit, then it didn't matter if you died or not. Like, if it didn't matter if you lived or died. More often, more often than not, like, it'd be better if you died because you were probably diseased or useless or crippled or whatever, right? Or, or like, or, like, and that's, that's if, like, you, you did something that, that kind of, like, stirs the attention of other people. It could just be that you were on your way to, like, hunt or, or like, to gather some things in a in, in mountain or in the forest, and you get lost, or, or your, your arm gets snagged on something, and you end up fucking dying in the wilderness. Some animal comes and attacks you, you know? So, like, considering where most of us are, like, <laughs> you know, it, it's like... Pretty crazy, right? It's pretty fucking crazy. And so, like, what happens when people live in such a state, right? They yearn for, for like, safety. Eventually, people start to say, okay, like, I wish, like, I wish that, like, I didn't have to fear for my children's, like, lives and well-being. And my own life, uh, life and, and well-being, right? I wish that, like... Like, people didn't lose their lives to disease. I wish that people didn't have to live in their own filth, you know? I wish that there was a more convenient way of transportation, of, of, like, of, gov of, like, running, like, you know, like, logistically, and also governing our civilization so that, like, there's, there's more justice and less crime and violence and evil, right? From that tough and dangerous time evolved civilization as we knew it because those people they had a legitimate motivation because they had to worry day in and day out about their own lives about about things that they couldn't see you know ab about like going into the wilderness and being and, and and like and having something happen to them you know just losing like going out and then like your, your kid goes and runs somewhere and, and like you, and you lose them and you never fucking see them again because they've probably been captured by something or eaten by something, you know? From that place of danger, we were motivated to, to found the society and all of the, like the precursors to society that led up to this one society we live in. Okay? And, and, and here we are. You know, we live in the society that all of our ancestors, you know, built up for us, you know, and we're so comfortable and we don't have to worry about like dying, you know, anytime soon. We don't have to worry about not having enough food, you know, we're not worried about like, you know, like people like being violent towards us because there's a justice system, you know. And yet, a lot of us are like, like, oh, like, life is so tough, you know. Oh, man, like, I don't feel motivated today, you know, I don't want to do stuff, right. And like, I don't want to do stuff, and like, I'm lonely. And I'm here to say it's not your fault. <laughs> You know, so like, even though this is very like, you know, this is sounding like very, um, like very, <laughs> very kind of depressing what I'm saying, like society is the reason, you know, even though society is, is, is what we live in and what we built up to, it's the very thing that causes us to be unmotivated and to be lonely, right? But I'm here to say that it's not entirely your fault. It's because with the comfort of society, there was like, there was like a counteraction, right? Which is that, like, our levels of danger went down, you know? And so, the very thing that was motivating us towards, like, building a society that was safe and fair, you know, and thriving, is no longer there anymore. 
or it, or like, yeah, it, it's 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 like a tiny fraction of what it once was, and that's why you can't get motivated. Because like, if you had a child, right, and you you had no idea whether that child would live past three years old. You're like, I'm going to do everything in my fucking power to ensure that my child lives past three years old. Right. Whereas in today's world, it's like most people don't even want to have kids. Right. Because it's like, what's the fucking point? You know, it's like, I'm safe. I live in this society. You know, it's comfortable. I don't give a shit. I hate kids anyway. Right. You don't have the motivation. Why? Why then are people lonely? Why did I identify that as one of the main things? That we deal with in society, right? Because you can go onto the internet, you can go to YouTube, and you can watch some Chinese guy talking to you as if you're like a friend, <laughs> you know, like in a friendly manner rather, right? And you can be comfortable and and sat there. And if you don't like what you're what you're seeing, you can click to another video where someone does more like entertainment stuff, you know. You don't have to listen to some Chinese guy preach at you or some random bullshit that, that brings your mood down, you know? You can go watch something that's, made, that's way more pleasant, right? So what happens when you have to meet up with real people, you know? It's like they have differing opinions from you, right? Like, they have different needs from you, you know? Sometimes, like... Um, they do something that irritates you and vice versa, right? So like when you're faced with that, you're going out to the real world and you meet people and they disappoint you. They're like, you're like, why the fuck is this guy like, you know, like I was hoping this person would be cool, but then they had to do that one thing that, that, that kind of creeped or weirded me out. And I don't know if I want to talk to this person ever again, you know, and then they start blowing your phone up. You're like, what the fuck? Can't this person give me some personal space or vice versa? Like you're hitting them up and they, and they never reply. And you're like, this fucking... This fucking, like, you know, like, dodgy asshole. Like, I just never get a hold of him. You know? Do you, like, and then you go home and you log onto the internet and there's, like, a, there's, like, a, there's like a, uh, an entire world full of, like, entertainment, you know, dramas and shows and, and vlogs and let's plays and all of this stuff that does not require you to adjust yourself, does not require you to to like have to compromise yourself does not require you to like to like to play a role so that people don't get offended you know and you can just comfortably sit there and enjoy the benefits you know of of being engaged with something without the detriments of being involved with an actual person right in the old days if you didn't have human connections what would happen to you you would get isolated and you would fucking die, right? So like, and, and there was no entertainment, right? Guess where entertainment came from? People were fucking bored, you know? Like, as society got more, like, more, like people, people wanted to be entertained, you know? People wanted to feel better, you know? As they got safer, they also wanted to feel better. So people started to make music. People started to write literature and poems and stuff of that nature. People started to do theater, you know? And all of these other things, right? This, this entertainment, right? To the point where we are now. Where, like, the entertainment is so fucking good that you look at this entertainment and you look at an actual, like, connection with someone. You're like, I could talk to this person, but then, like, there's no guarantee that they'll actually resonate with me, you know, and I, and I with them. You know, and it's like, and, if, and it, if it turns out that, like, I don't need to connect with this person then, like, it's going to be a headache, you know, because then I have to, like, let them know without hurting their feelings. And particularly if they liked me and I didn't like them, and it's just a fucking headache. You know? But like I said, in the old days, like, you cherished your human connections. Because, yeah, sometimes people had the weird idiosyncrasies, but, like, it was better than being alone and having to brave the, the tough world alone. There was motivation for connection. Right. But now that motivation has diminished because we have entertainment and society is so safe. Right. Similarly. Similarly. Mediocrity. Again, like I've already mentioned it, really, to be honest, it's like, why, why are people mediocre? 
Well, because, um, yeah, we're mediocre because, like, there's, there's no motivation. Like, I'm not saying that, like, that, like, okay, after, you know, it's like, it's tricky, right? Because it's like, well, that means that it's kind of your responsibility to get motivated. And, like, this is kind of what, what I want to wrap up with, but, like, and in this, in this entry, I've kind of spoken in such a way that implies um, that, like, basically, it's not your fault, right? And, and it isn't. And I think that that's a useful perspective, you know? It's the insight that I got, and I thought I would share with you, so that you can understand, like, why it is that it's so hard to be motivated in today's world, right? But yeah, you know, it's like the reason people aren't motivated is so that there's no reason to be. You know? People are fucking lazy. Yeah, they are. You know, and it's like, you can blame them all you want, you know, but like, you can blame yourself all you want. But like, I think it, it's more resourceful to understand why you're lazy, you know, and to accept it and to see like, what you can do about it, right? And this is kind of like, the wrap up of this entry is like, okay. So it's obvious that like, we have these problems. And the reason we have these problems that I've highlighted, there are many more problems in society. This is only like a small... Like I said, like, I feel that these are kind of two things that are really rampant and that people don't usually talk about. But there are other problems in, in, in society, you know, and there are other approaches. But, like, in the century, I just wanted to focus on these. But, like, I think what is required right now is... Is... Well, I think it's two things. I think the first is we have to, like, become more conscious. Like, in the, ab in the absolute sense of, like, becoming more awakened and more enlightened. And, and really, you know, and, and that's like a woo-woo way of putting it, but really it's, it's just like, kind of like, like, questioning more, thinking more, you know. Like, we don't live in the 90s anymore. In the 90s, like, you know, you could fucking go to your fucking job at McDonald's, you know, and, and watch the latest Ace Ventura film and scratch your ass because like now videotapes have, are, can be rented from Blockbuster. It's like, we don't live in that world anymore, you know? The middle class dream is like at its peak and everyone's like, go to university and like get a job, blah, blah, you know, get a family, get a mortgage, hell yeah. And like they're fucking like, fucking like Hannah Montana from Disney Channel is like fucking like advertising mortgages to you. You know, we don't live in that world anymore. So like, given where we are now, like we like we need to like start to think about okay if if like in such a state like I, it, it's time to like take responsibility for my own life and that means becoming self-aware you know and finding your own motivation right now number two number two is 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 linked to this right but it's like it, it, it's again it's it's another kind of proactive thing proactivity is really the, the the thing that's needed you know in the sense that like you like we need to if if we're not motivated we have to find some way to be motivated if we actually want to do those things if we don't then like you know it doesn't matter how hard you push you're never going to be motivated for those things but if it's something that you that you like right like say you want to become a, an artist you want to become a traveler you want to become someone in this world and to be happy and fulfilled and abundant then you have to come up with your own motivation and like the interesting thing about this world is that like because and like even though that the, the convenience and connection of the world has caused us to become lazy and lonely right it also, the positive side of it is that like it it it, it is like a it is like a gold mine of ideas and perspectives, right? You can think in such a way that will motivate you in some way, you know. You can listen to someone else talk and then let their perspective like kind of take you over, or you can like just delve into your own perspective and think of a way that you can rationalize to yourself to get yourself motivated, right? Let me give you an example, right? Um, there's such a thing called gamification, right? Gamification, right? And I think 
this it, it, it's an example of like things that we do right because because like i <laughs> i grew up playing video games I'll, I'll admit that like i'm a nerd right and i just love them and like if people told me to give up video games i don't think i ever could right but this but there's a thing where like you can use the elements of gaming to and apply them to real life to get you to motivate you to do certain things right as an example like and like i had another specific example which is like i call <laughs> i call it like taking like well like t um making your life into a show right and it's like Obviously, I'm not saying, like, you know, make your life Game of Thrones and go around killing people and raping people. You know, I'm not saying that, right? <laughs> let's, let's, re, let's reawaken, like, the, the fucking medieval times, you know, full of, like, fucking, like, knights and fucking things like that, you know? No. I'm saying, like, take the elements of that show that you love and, and, and see, like, where you can apply the same feelings in your real life, right? Like for example, like if when you talk to people, like you 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 can like you can maybe role play. Maybe that that will ease you into like be able to, being able to talk to people. You know, we're we're entering a world where like, yeah, th th there's like there's there's way more kind of like con contrived things, and th that's not necessarily a bad thing, as long as like the people are conscious and we all realize that like we we have to be honest with ourselves first and foremost, like because like these things can easily become escapism. And, and become toxic if, if we're not honest with ourselves and other people, right? About how we feel and, like, all of the various... Our whole truth, you know? But, like, you know, like, it's, it's like... Like, why does meetup.com exist? Because people, like... Have you heard of, like, intentional communities? I'm sure you have. Like, if you follow people like Teal Swan, then, like, you'll have heard of intentional communities, right? It's, it's, it's a community where you can, you can design it in any way you want. And you can use elements from your favorite things. You know, you could you could take your favorite show, Friends or something, right? <laughs> I don't know, whatever you like, right? And then like, you can you can infuse your community or your idea of a community with that idea, right? And then you can see who else is interested. It's like a role play, right? Like who else is interested in doing those things with you, right? So like. Even though the motivation to like, because like we're we're not we're no longer we're we're no longer fearing our, for our lives, right? So like we don't get together as close and form those tight knit relationships, so that we can like help like keep us keep ourselves safe and happy versus the external world. No, we don't have that anymore. Like we live in, in a place where like everyone, no one has to talk to each other, you know. No one even has to like smile at each other or anything. Particularly where I live, like in London, right? Like no one, which is funny because I kind of like it sometimes, but like. Yeah, like, people, like, you know, occasionally, like, you know, I, I will smile and say hi to people, but a lot of the times I don't, I, you don't have to. And, like, I think this actually takes, actually knocks, like, some people off balance, like, people who come from different places. But, like, yeah, that's the kind of world we live in. And yet, like, we're, we're like, the most compact and closest we've ever been geographically. It's, it's insane. Right. And so we need to come up with, like, with, like, creative ways to facilitate that, you know. And, of course, there's always going to be a bottom line. You know, at the end of the day, like, it's like, yes, it's, it's way less effort and way more enticing to just watch a show that features a group of people who are close and you can live vicariously through that and kind of, like, get your feelings of, like, oxytocin and, like, fucking friendship and, and intimacy from those shows. And that's okay, but there will always be something missing. You know, it's like, you, you will never, but you'll, but you'll never be that person who has a group of friends that really care about you. You will never be able to talk about the things that you really care about. Because, like, it's a show. It's a play, right? You get the feelings, but you don't get the intimacy. So, like, again, like, we have to come with creative ways to solve these things. And that's the world that we're getting to. It's like, we have to use, funnily enough, the very thing that, lo that landed us in the situation, which is our brains, making us insensitive to energy. All right, all right. Trademark bojinjin.com. Uh, like, we use that intellect to facilitate these areas. You know, how can we find interesting ways of motivating ourselves? You know, there's things like 
forums, there's things like live streaming, you know, there's things like meetups where you can get together with people and keep each other accountable or like share ideas, you know, mastermind groups. There's way more possibilities for you to do that now. Way more. You know, it's funny when you see the average person because like they live in such a bubble. You know, and this is me ranting, of course, but like, it's like, you're like, I'm like, you have no idea. Like, I get it. Life is hard, right? You know, life is hard. There's a lot of forces against you. It's not entirely your fault that you're lazy and mediocre. It's not. But at the same time, like, there are all these possibilities, man, you know? And like, yeah, it's hard. You know, it is hard. Why, why are so many people mediocre in this world? Because success is hard. Why are so many people lonely? Because intimacy is fucking hard, right? But it's like, you have to still move forwards, you know? You still have to move forwards, but... Um, anyway, what was the second? Let me wrap this up. I think I, I kind of s skipped over the second ones. Yeah, the second one, interestingly, is like to, 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 to think about pain in, different, in a different way, right? And this is something I'm going to extend into the next entry, actually. But like, um, yeah, because like, Pain is actually the missing link in many people's lives. I'm not saying to become a masochist, because like it sounds like that when I say like you should introduce more pain in your life. But no, that, that's not what I mean. I mean like the next time that like you're in like a situation that upsets you or triggers you, you know, or you're hurt by someone, then like there's a way of viewing it, right? And and how you view it or how you do that is it's personal to you, right? But the way I do it is that like I say, okay, like. I breathe in the feeling because for me, like I'm kind of I'm more. I like I like being with my feelings, so I breathe it in and I feel the pain of it. But then, like eventually, like as I'm present with it, like there's there's a new feeling that arises eventually, and like I start to remember like all of the stuff that's that uh, that is positive about me, that is pos about, positive about the world, and the things that I love, and then like, and then I sit there between the contrast of my pain and who I am and my love, and somehow I just, I just find there's a voice that arises in my head that says, how's that for motivation? You know, like, if this person said this to you and it upset you, it means it, that person is indirectly saying, like, you know, here's a, get, here's a punch in the face for you to feel that pain, and that pain will push you in the direction more towards what you love, right? Because that's kind of what pain does, you know, it's unpleasant, but like, and I'm not, again, I'm not saying that like, you should hurt yourself in this way, or, or that like, or that like, you know, you have to like, like, you're a pussy if you don't, I'm not saying that. I'm saying like, like, there's a way of framing pain in a positive way, right? In, in a way where you're like, hmm, okay, I can, like, I own my pain. Because like, the reason why a lot of us don't, like pain and i'm no different right it's because like we have this notion that like pain is wrong that like pain means that you're weak but also that if you don't experience pain you're also weak if that makes sense that's why the, uh, you know the, the, so many like people who are like like who have a chip on their shoulder it's because they're trapped in, the, in this like kind of like density of pain this pain body as they call it right but there's a way of taking pain which is really just a stimulus to be honest it's really just like a sensation when you think about it and again like i'm going to go into into depth in the next episode about this but like um you know you do that and uh, and, and you but and you feel that sensation but like you don't have to like make a big deal out of it if you do that's okay and this is this is like i've i've, I've talked about this in previous entries it's called allowing right this is what people mean when they say to allow yourself you know it's the opposite of striving, right? Striving is another thing that a lot of people talk about, and it's important, right? But there's a letting go muscle as well, right? Which is this allowing thing. So, like, it's, 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 it's learning to be, again, compassionate with, your, with the, the you that is hurt, right? And, if, and like, it's not... Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just being with the pain, you know, like... And like, as you be more and more with the pain, you learn to like, think of it in a more productive way. Like you, you learn to think like, okay, first of all, I'm not a pussy because I'm hurt. And I'm, I'm also not a pussy if, if like, 
uh, I'm, I'm also not a pussy if I, if I don't continue to seek out being hurt, if that makes sense. Because I think that's, to me, a very profound statement, you know, and indicative of what this mean, what it means to be with, to be with your pain, you know, to go in the direction of your darkness, as I say, you know, one of the steps of tapping into your sensitivity, the first one being tapping into your joy. Well, this is, this is essentially what Teal Swan calls spirituality 101 versus 2.0. Um, but yeah, you know, and the thing is like, as you do that, you will realize the pain is actually on your side. The negativity and like unconsciousness and and unpleasantness and ugliness and all and all of these dark energies they're actually on your side because they do give you like some motivation towards bettering your life you know if that's how you choose to resolve them because a lot of us weren't taught to do that we were just taught like to internalize it and to like hate ourselves and to hate other people and that's the state of the world we live in right but like there's a way of being with your pain and learning to be with it and to see it objectively and to make and to, to feel better yourself right right and uh yeah and from there like you realize that like it's a gift to you because then you can take that charge of that that pain and and make your life better that's what they mean by mastering so <laughs> like there's something in Star Wars. I'm not exactly sure what it's called because, like, I'm not, like, I'm not really an official. Like, I'm not really too familiar with Star Wars. But it's like when you use the Force, that's like a dark force, right? And I, I believe, like, I could be completely wrong, but like, there's, there's maybe a character, maybe even like one of the Skywalkers who like embraces the dark side and learns how to wield it. And there's a game called Kingdom Hearts, like for the, for you, for you gamers out there, right? Where there's a character Riku who is like more or less the antihero of that of that story, who and there's other characters like that as well. But like they embrace the darkness, and and learn how how to not be consumed by it. That's all. It's pretty literal, actually. It's a literal like kind of metaphor, if that even exists. Literal metaphor, like of of how, of of how to like transmute pain and darkness and negativity. Right. It's like the thing is like. You have to let it into your heart a bit, but then like, you, but then like from there, like you learn to kind of be with it and then eventually come out to the other side and, and, and kind of transmute it into light. Right. So anyway, I'll get, I'll get into more of this in the next, uh, and uh, in the next entry. So cool. Just an insight from me, you know, like if you, if you notice, I mean, these are so kind of like commonplace, but like, it's not a, like, it's not. Uh, you know, like, I don't beat myself up over it, but, like, it's just, I just realized it, and I'm like, okay, it means, that, like, it's an opportunity for us to become more, uh, to become more creative in the way that we handle life, because, like, again, I hope that in this entry, I gave this insight to you, where, that, that says, basically, like, it may not be our fault entirely that this is the case, and that it may not be other people's fault, but, it is just something that came about as our society matured into what it is now. But the important thing for us is, is to be with that. Again, you have to let a bit of the darkness into your heart so that you're real and human and you can connect with other people in their pain. Because a lot of these people who are like super violent, super aggressive, super like unconscious, it's because no one's willing to connect with them in darkness. I'm not saying I'm an expert in it. I'm sure there are other people who are better suited for that kind of thing. I'm more of a light worker type, you know, but like I at least try to like to be balanced. So I hope that comes across in my entries. I'm not trying to because again, I don't think there's anything wrong with being light. Like again, I try to be as positive in these entries as possible, but I also realize that you have to, you can't be too light because that means that you're kind of, you're trying to, to push out darkness and that is unfortunately an imbalance in like in your being you know and it doesn't serve yourself and it doesn't serve the people unfortunately but anyway that's just my perspective so cool i hope that was insightful for you guys i hope you enjoyed it um yeah and i hope it gave you something to think about hopefully positive things so cool thank you very much for watching this guys as usual and in the next episode, I will 
I will uh, basically move on to like this this idea of pain and also love, right? You know, a new kind of understanding I reached recently. So cool. Look forward to that. And as always, I hope you guys are well. Keep grinding, <laughs> keep loving, and keep going towards your dreams, guys. Keep going towards your dreams. I love you. Thank you very much for watching this. Peace out. Hiya!